नमस्कार पुनः स्वागत करते हैं आप सभी का एनसीआरटी के लाइव इंटरैक्टिव सेशन में मैं हूं सिमरन सिंह आप सब यह विशेष कार्यक्रम देख रहे हैं पीएम ई विद्या के चैनल नंबर दस पर और हमसे रता करने का एक और जरिया है आप सब जानते हैं हमारा यूट्यूब चैनल है एनसीआर ऑफिशियल तो अगले आधे घंटे के लिए हम लेकर आए हैं कक्षा नौवी के सभी विद्यार्थियों के लिए सोशल साइंस का ये सत्र जिसमें हम बातचीत करेंगे एक ऐसे विषय पर जो शायद आपके लिए नया होगा तो आज हमारा शीर्षक है द फ्रेंच रेवोल्यूशन पार्ट वन और इसी पर और जानकारी हमारे साथ साझा करने के लिए स्टूडियो में हमारे साथ एक मेहमान भी उपस्थित हैं चलिए उनसे आपका परिचय कराते हैं हमारे साथ स्टूडियो में है श्री अमित कुमार ठाकुर सर नमस्कार सर नमस्कार नमस्कार ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स देयर पेरेंट्स एंड आर फेलो टीचर्स हु आर आल्सो वाचिंग दिस प्रोग्राम बहुत बहुत इस्तेबाल सर आपका इस सत्र में सर लेक्चरर हैं हिस्ट्री के और गवर्नमेंट को एच सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल ई ब्लॉक वेस्ट विनोद नगर दिल्ली में कार्यरत हैं और इस पूरे सत्र के दौरान सर हमारे साथ उपस्थित हैं हमारे स्टूडियो में तो यदि ऐसे कोई सवाल हैं जो आपके जहन में आते हैं आप हमसे पूछना चाहते हैं तो एक कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर आप देख सकते हैं आपकी स्क्रीन पर यह नंबर फ्लैश हो रहा है हमारा नंबर है एट और कक्षा नौवीं के सभी विद्यार्थियों के लिए हमारी आधिकारिक मेल आईडी है डी टी तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं अपनी इस चर्चा को जिसमें हम बातचीत करेंगे फ्रेंच रेवोल्यूशन के बारे में सबसे पहले तो सर मैं आपसे यही निवेदन करूंगी कि आज के इस सत्र का एक ब्रीफ हमारे सभी विद्यार्थियों के साथ साझा करें जी डियर स्टूडेंट यू माइट बी थिंकिंग that uh, we are living in india and we should be concerned with our uh, history of our india then why should we study history of the world especially the french revolution of course yes so this is the question generally students ask to me and the answer of this question has been beautifully given by a french uh, historian uh, uh, burden fraudal and uh, what he said he said that we can't talk of uh, the nation without the world so hmm. if you want to study the history of a country you must understand the history of the world because all the countries are interconnected and uh, ev- ev- the uh, and the course of uh, history in one country is influenced by the course of the world history so therefore it is very much interesting and it is very much important to understand the history of the world to understand the history of our own country uh, i will give you an example about this uh, i am going to show you a very good picture yes you can see this picture uh, this picture is uh, this picture should be on your monitor this picture should be on your monitor yes yes so what is this i know yes i know most of you have recognized it that it is the uh, it is the preamble to our poise constitution of india i am ask uh, i would request you to ponder over three important words here liberty equality and fraternity where have these words come from these words have come from the french revolution so now the word uh, the wordings of that french historian are becoming more meaningful to you because our own country's history is influenced by the history of the french revolution therefore it is very much important for us to understand the history of the french revolution and that is why we have brought this chapter to you for a de- for having a deeper understanding of the world history especially the uh, your uh, this f- uh, french revolution so dear student you must be knowing that uh, uh, the study of history is very fascinating it is a very interesting subject why it is important why it is interesting because when we study history we become a traveler in the time machine and we go in the past to understand what was happening during the uh, those days or in the past so here today also we are going to uh, uh, we are going to ride the uh, the time machine and we are uh, we are becoming the time traveler and we are going to paris the capital city of france but that paris is not today's paris the Par- uh, we are going to talk about the paris of 1789 so 
let us go to Paris and watch what was happening on 14th July of 1789 there. So on the morning of 14th July 1789, the city of Paris was in the state of Allah. The king of France had commanded the troops to move into the city and rumors were spreading that the, uh, the uh, king was going to order the troops, the military to fire upon the citizens. Some 700 men and women gathered in front of the town hall and they decided to form a people's militia and uh, they stormed into, they broke into different government offices and buildings in search of uh, arms so that they can revolt against the king. Finally, a group of hundreds of people marched towards the eastern part of the city of Paris and uh, they stormed a fortress that is used as a prison, uh, as a prisoner, as a prison for the, for capturing the, for, uh, for uh, taking the, for keeping the prisoners there. And that uh, fortress prison was Bastille. People uh, around there, uh, people assembled there and they stormed into that Bastille. And what they, uh, and uh, uh, why they attacked the Bastille? Because they want to have, they wanted uh, to have the arms and they hope, they were hoping that uh, there were uh, arms will be holding there. So uh, when they attacked the Bastille, the, uh, the commander, the commander of the Bastille was killed in that battle and uh, people released all the prisoners, all, uh, although there were only seven prisoners. But the fall of Bastille was considered a very great event in the history of not only France, but in the history of uh, the whole world. Uh, I will show you a picture which, uh, which depicts the fall of Bastille. So this fall of Bastille, uh, 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 soon after the demolition of Bastille, artists made prints commemorating the event. Why the fall of Bastille, why the fall of Bastille was uh, being celebrated by the people? Because everyone in, the, in France uh, hated Bastille because it was the symbol of the despotic power of the king. Therefore, all of, uh, all of them became very happy when, the, was, uh, when there was a fall of Bastille. So, uh, uh, when people uh, stormed into Bastille and they destroyed Bastille, uh, uh, then what happened? Uh, uh, then uh, when, uh, when people destroyed the whole Bastille uh, fort, then its uh, stone fragments were sold in the market to all those who wanted to have a souvenir of uh, its destruction. So this fall of Bastille became a very great event in the history of the world. And in the days to come, uh, more writing were seen in Paris and the countryside and most of the people were protesting against the high price of bread. When uh, much later, when uh, uh, historians look back upon the time, they saw the events of 14th, uh, 14th July 1789 as the beginning of, uh, as the beginning of a chain of events that ultimately led to the execution of the king in France, although not many were anticipating this uh, outcome, but how and why did it happen? We are going to study uh, in the uh, in, in later days. And uh, you, uh, all of you must be knowing that uh, there are some questions in the examination. So one important question can be asked in the examination that what happened on 14 July 1789. Or uh, uh, another question can be asked that how did French Revolution started? What happened on 14 July 1789? That was the beginning of the French Revolution. And uh, when you are asked in the examination, what, uh, how did French Revolution start? You have to explain all this, what happened on 14 July 1789. So 
after studying after understanding what happened on 7 uh, 14 july 1789 in france in paris now uh, it, it, uh, do you think that's uh, the the work of a historian the work of a student of the history is over no the work of the uh, student of history is not over merely by knowing the fact that what happened on a particular day the actual work of a student of history begins to discover why did it happen so dear student we are going to understand the causes of this french revolution why did french revolution occur and this this is again a very very important question from the point of view of examination there are several uh, reasons there are several uh, causes of uh, uh, of uh, uh, french revolution but we will go uh, we will uh, discuss them one by one so let us start the first and the immediate cause of french revolution the first and the immediate cause of french revolution was the mounting financial burden on the uh, on the king of france so dear student in 1774 ha uh, yes in 1774 a new king louis 16 uh, ascended uh, ascended the throne of uh, france and uh, he was just 20 uh, 20 years of age at that time and he married a young princess austrian austrian princess mary antoinette upon his accession the new king found the treasury of france was empty why was it em uh, why was it, it empty because france was indulged in war with uh, britain for a very long period this long war had drained all the financial resources of france and in addition to that france also had to maintain a very extravagant court at the immense palace of versailles moreover under louis 16 France also helped the 13 colony of colonies of America to get the freedom from Britain. It also costed very much to France exchequer. So, due to all these th uh, reasons, the um, the treasury of France was uh, almost empty. Now, what will the king do? Because he had to maintain a large army. He had to maintain the court. He had to run the government offices. he had to run the government universities so he needed money so what will the uh, king will uh, would do uh, uh, initially king tried to take loan uh, from the money lenders but loan rose very high already uh, there was a very huge burden of loan on the exchequer of france and the france was obliged to spend an increasing percentage of its budget on payment of uh, interest on loan alone so the uh, this option uh, of taking more loan was not feasible then what would the king do king now decided to raise taxes on the people but this measure would uh, not uh, be sufficient because the uh, uh, in the society of france only people belonging to the third estate paid taxes and they were already overburdened with the taxes so it was not possible to raise more taxes but even then king decided to increase taxes but according to the constitution of france if king wanted to increase taxes then he had to summon a meeting of estates journal the meeting of estates journal was not summoned for a very long time so Uh, in uh, 1789 king decided to summon the meeting of uh, uh, of estates journal and when this meeting of estates journal was summoned the members of the third estate started protest they revolted they started revolt and they dis uh, assembled before the um, uh, town hall and they uh, stormed into the bastille fortress and they demo demolish that fortress and thus the uh, french revolution started 
so this is the first and immediate cause of french revolution that king wanted to increase tax on the people and for that the meeting of the estate journal uh, was summoned by the king and in that meeting of estate journal the people belonging to the third estate started revolt this is the immediate cause now we come on the second and very important cause and that second cause is the feudal uh, is the exploitative nature of the feudal feudalistic society in france uh, i will show you uh, an image to yes this image shows the structure of french society the french society was divided into three estates the first estate which is the uppermost ladder of the society consisted of the clergy clergy who were clergy clergy were the people who were having important offices in the church they were clergy and they are the topmost uh, people of the french society they enjoyed all the privileges the second estate of uh, uh, the french society was consisting of the nobles the, it was uh, the nobility that constituted the second estate and who were nobles nobles were the officers of the king and they were uh, almost semi independent and they behaved like a small king in their estate or in their fiefdom and there were the third uh, and now there there was the third estate and that third estate consisted of the common and ordinary people but mind you that third estate was not a homo as uh, is not the homogeneous group that was a heterogeneous group there are different types of people in the third estate in third estate there were big businessmen merchants court officials lawyers etc so this is the first part, this is the first category of the people belonging to the third estate the second type of the people were peasants and artisans and the third type of people belonging to third estate were the small peasants landless labor and servants so uh, you should understand and you should remember that the people uh, that the third estate was not a homogeneous group it was a heterogeneous group uh, almost uh, 90% of uh, people in uh, of 90% of the population in france uh, was of uh, uh, the peasant they were the peasants but those peasant um, but most of the peasants were not the were not the owner of the land they cultivated almost 60% of the land was owned by the church the nobility and the rich member of the third estate and the first and the second estate the members of the first and the second estate that is clergy and noble people were enjoying certain privileges by birth and one of the most important such privileges was that the people belonging to the first estate and the second estate were exempted from paying any tax to the estate uh, to the state that is to the king they only enjoy and didn't pay any tax to the king and <laughs> they, uh, the uh, noble the nobles also enjoyed noble uh, noble noble privileges feudal privileges and one of, and what and uh, one of such feudal privileges was the feudal dues which they extracted from the peasants the peasants were obliged to render different services to their uh, lord uh, for example uh, the uh, peasants had to work in the home and in the fields of the nobles they had to serve in the army of the noble and uh, and and they had to participate in various activities like building roads etc so you can say that uh, the th people of the third estate were the most downtrodden section of the society and they were very much oppressed and they were very much exploited by the first and second estate people and uh, uh, the uh, society and the institutions before uh, the before 1789 was called old regime so when whenever you uh, come across the term old regime you must understand that old regime refers to the institutions and society in france 
before 1789. So in that old regime, there was total exploitation of the people belonging to the third estate. Church also imposed tax on the people and that tax is called the tithe. And it is the 10% of the land produce of the peasants. Uh, similarly, um, uh, the people, especially the people of the third estate had to pay a tax, uh, various types of taxes, including the direct tax, which is called the tile and uh, various indirect taxes, various indirect taxes, which were imposed on the articles of everyday consumption like tobacco, salt, etc. So you can see that the society of France was very much exploitative and majority of people belong to the third estate but that third estate is the most exploited uh, is the most exploited segment of the society and all the people uh, belonging to the third estate were against the system of privileges and whenever and when they got an opportunity to rise uh, to uh, to rose again, uh, to rise against the this exploitative system of the french uh, society they they started revolt and this led to the french revolution so this is the second and very most a uh, very um, important cause of french revolution uh, dear student i will show you uh, another picture this picture uh, is uh, generally known as the spider and the fly here you can see the exploitative nature of the French society. Uh, um, um, you can see a very poor person. Uh, he, uh, he is the peasant and uh, he brought everything to his lord and that fat lord is consuming everything without doing anything and he is exploiting the peasant. So the lord represents the spider and the peasant represents the fly. Why this picture is uh, termed as uh, the spider and fly? Because a spider sucks the very lifeblood of, uh, of the fly and in this way the fly gets uh, killed. Similarly, the noble is sucking the very lifeblood of the uh, very lifeblood of the uh, these peasants and therefore this picture shows how exploitative the French society before 1789. So every person belonging to the third estate wanted to change this exploitative system of uh, privileges and therefore when in 1789 they got an opportunity to do so. So they quickly uh, rose against the, uh, uh, this system of privileges and thus the, uh, the French revolution occurred. So this is the third, uh, second important cause. Now, dear student, we come to the third important cause of French Revolution and that is called the subsistence crisis. What do you understand by subsistence crisis? Subsistence crisis is a situation when the basic means of livelihood are endangered and due to shortage of food, people, uh, people started uh, uh, um, people, uh, uh, people died because of shortage of food. People died. This situation is known as the subsistence crisis. So, uh, before uh, I will show you a very important uh, picture to understand what is this subsistence crisis, and it is an activity for you. Uh, you know that uh, we have uh, started this flow chart with bad harvest. Some uh, on a particular year, in a particular year, there was suppose a bad harvest, and that bad harvest would lead to the death of uh, thousands of people. This become a subsistence crisis. So <coughs> the activity is uh, here is you have to fill in the words given in uh, uh, in in the picture below. Uh, in this blank, uh, in this blanks. So, how would you fill the words in the in these blanks? So, let us try something. Try to apply your mind. But uh, because we are running short of time, therefore, I will show you the correct sequence how this uh, subsistence crisis happens. So, dear student, it is clear that 
uh, on then there was bad harvest then scarcity of grain started and because of scarcity of grain rising food prices and yani, uh, uh, food prices started uh, increasing and because of this rising food prices the poorest can no longer buy bread so what happened uh, two consequences follow one weaker bodies when you are not having food then your body become weaker and second food rights the hungry people start uh, writings so these uh, because of these two things weaker bodies because of weaker body uh, diseases and epidemics occurred and number of people died similarly because of food rights uh, many people died so ultimately you can conclude that due to bad harvest increased number of death occurred so this is called the subsistence crisis so before uh, before 1789 Uh, in the old regime generally this subsistence crisis occurred which forced the people to rise uh, to uh, to rise against the uh, uh, rise against the establishment and uh, they started revolting against the uh, this uh, exploitative system of french society of course sir yes and i do believe all the viewers watching our session they have kept a note of the important areas that have been discussed in the conversation thank you so much sir for being a part of this conversation and apprising our viewers about this important topic that talks about french revolution and what were the major reasons due to which french revolution occurred thanks a lot to all the viewers who have connected with ncri for this particular interaction stay connected we'll be right back within few minutes with another session namaskar